All right, guys, welcome to this object oriented programming using Python video. And uh, a lot of people in uh, on YouTube and in other videos make things a lot of a lot complex. And object oriented programming is not that complex if you understand the basics and very simple concepts in object oriented programming. So that is my aim with this video to explain everything in very, very simple terms so that you can make complex programs after understanding the base structure of classes and objects and objected programming as a whole. So let's get started with this video by understanding what exactly is object oriented programming. So what I want you to do is forget everything you know about coding and go back to your high school. In high school, you had this geometry box, right? And in that geometry box, you had all these cool stuff like pencils, sharpeners, scales, protractors, and compass. So inside that geometry box were these things that would, you would use to basically create something. So all these things inside that geometry box are actually objects. And that geometry box itself is a class. So that geometry box contains a class of objects and the geometry box is a class and the objects inside that thing or the things inside that geometry box are actually objects. And when we use those objects to create something on paper, then it is known as object oriented creation. And similarly in programming, when we use objects and classes to create something, it is known as object oriented programming. All right, so that was pretty simple. So let's uh, give you another example to make sure that you properly understand this concept of classes and objects. So imagine there are a lot of animals in this uh, in this world, right? I can't say about the universe because we don't know about the aliens, but, but at least on this earth, we have a lot of animals. And for example, sharks, deer, lions, tigers. So all these animals are actually a class of animals and these animals like sharks, deer, lions are actually objects. So whenever we talk about a group of things, then that group is actually a class and those things are objects. So in this example, the group is animals and all the things inside the group like shark, deer and uh, tiger are actually uh, things that are known as objects. So to give you a final example, which we are actually going to be coding is uh, that of students. So for example, forget everything that you know about classes and objects that I have told you till now. And imagine again that you're in high school and that high school is a class of students, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to implement the same functionality of uh, high school inside a code. So we are going to be creating a class of students. All right. And then every student inside that class had a property, right? For example, uh, they must have a first name, they must have a last name, and they must have some kind of an email also. So what we are going to do is we are just going to create something known as initialization function or an initialization method. So we're just going to write in it. And now we are going to write the properties of every student. So every student in a class must have a first name that we are going to pre represent by F name. And then every student must have a last name. And then every student we are assuming must also have an email ID. Now, what exactly is this init over here? So this init is a method or a constructor. So what exactly is a method and what is, is the difference between the method and a function? So you can assume kind of say that method and functions are the same thing, but the main difference between them and the superficial difference between them is uh, whenever we use objects inside a code, then the function are basically known as methods. And when we don't use objects and classes, then they are just known as functions. So it's, it's a pretty, a little bit of a superficial definition, but for our purposes, it's fine. And then this init is actually just a, it's, it's a kind of a special method inside the uh, classes and inside Python that we use to initialize the properties of our class. Since in our case, the class is students and the properties of each student is first name, last name and email. And what is the self over here? So this self represents the student that we are talking about. So let's say my name is Atre. And if we refer to me and uh, inside this class, then this self will be actually become Atre. But let's say there is another in student in our class and that student name is Johnny. And if we are talking about that Johnny student, then the self actually turns into Johnny. So in the case, uh, whatever we are, whatever person we are talking about or whatever student we are talking about in reference to the self actually changes its purpose and its uh, value. Now, how do we actually initialize these three variables inside our class? That's pretty simple. We just write self 
dot first name equals to f name and then we do the same thing with the last name and the email now obviously these are the variables that are inside students and these are the variables that we are getting from our uh, when we create an object then these variables will be passed inside the class so when we are creating objects which you will see in a second that these will contain the name the last name and the email and then these will get stored inside these variables so these variables can be named as anything we can even call it fn uh, but just a lot of coders just like to name these and these the same so i'm just going to call it f name now that we have created a class and we have given some properties to that class and to each and every student how do we actually add students inside a class so imagine that your high school class is totally empty right now and you want to add the student one by one to that class how do you do that to do that you can create a student variable you can just call it stu1 for student1 and then you call this class by writing students and inside that you provide the value of these three variables so i'm just going to write the first name as my name athreya and the last name as bhat and then the email id i'm just going to call it athreya01 at the gmail.com now how do you retrieve these values so first of all what happens when you write this and what happens when this line gets executed so when it sees that the student's class or the student calling is over here it goes over here to the student class and then it takes all these three values and stores it inside these three variables and then it initializes all three variables and stores them inside this f name l name and email and how do we retrieve these values the retrieval process is pretty simple you can just write stu1 dot let's say we want the email so i can just write email over here and let's actually print it out and see how it looks so i'm just going to print it out by writing this and let's actually execute this main uh, function so as you can see it has printed out the email over here that is athreya01@gmail.com now let's actually also print out the last name so for that it's pretty easy instead of the email we are just going to write l name and a name over here and click on play and you'll be able to see that we have printed out the last name now what if we change the l name to just ln over here then as you can see there is an error over here which says unresolved attribute then also over here we'll have to change it to ln and then click on play and you'll be able to see that the uh, last name and the email is printed properly so let's actually change it to l name again and l name again and uh, let's create more than one object so right now there is only one student inside our uh, class so let's actually add one more student inside our class i'm just going to copy and paste it over here call it the student 2 and let's call him uh, let's call him johnny and just like we do in all our videos we use weird names so i'm just going to write so johnny sense over here and i don't know his email but i'm just going to assume is something like johnny sense at the real gmail.com and uh, this will make sure that the second student is now added inside our class and how do we print last name let's call it stu uh, student 2 dot last name and let's actually print it out and see if it works and as you can see the last name is printed over here now before we go further into this video i want to make sure that you guys understand what are the objects and what are the instances in our scenario so we have added two students inside a class of students so both of these students that is the student 1 and the student 2 are actually instances of the class of students and each of these instances when they are talked as an uh, as a group then these are known as objects so if we say that uh, student 1 and student 2 are going to school then we say basically student 1 and student 2 objects are going to school but if we just talk about talk about student 1 as an individual then we say basically student 1 instance is going to school so these kind of uh, object and instances are interusable but there is a very thin line between both of them uh, so don't worry about them too much you can call them instance or as an, or as an object they are kind of interchangeable all right so now what i want to do is actually create a function inside a class so a lot of people don't know that we can also create functions inside a class of students so what if we want to print out the full name of our students that are inside the class so let's actually remove this from over here and to print out the full name of the students inside the class what we have to do is we have first have to write student 1 and then we have to print out the first name and then let's give a space a little bit and then we have to print out its last name by writing stu1.l name 
and uh, then let's say we have to print out the full name of the second student so we will have to copy and paste this again over here and instead of stu1 we can call it stu2 and then we can run this uh, code over here and as you can see that the full name of both the objects or instances is printed over here so what we are going to do is instead of uh, creating them one by one so the whole idea of object oriented programming is that the code should be reusable and if there are for example hundreds of students in a class we can't just print out their full names one by one we have to make sure that uh, we can just create a function inside a class and just print out the name very very quickly so what we are going to do is we are just going to create another uh, a function or a method in our case a method inside the students class and we are going to call it full name so let's call it full name and then inside this method what we are going to do is we are just going to write print and then we can just write over here print self dot f name and then we are just going to print give it a little bit of space over here and then just print out uh, self dot l name and instead of writing all of this stuff now what we can do is we can just write stu1 dot full name and that's pretty much it it's going to print out the full name of the student one object so we're just going to click on play and you'll be able to see that the student one name is printed and if we have to print out the student two full name we can just write student two over here and uh, call this function again and it's pretty easy so what exactly is happening behind the scenes when we are calling this full name function to understand that what we can do is let me actually remove this student one student two dot full name and let's actually write imp, uh, let's actually write students dot full name and inside this we are going to give the name of the instance that we want the full name of so in our case let's call it student one and let's click on play and you'll be able to see that both of these things that is stu one dot full name and students dot full name and then the name of the instance inside gives us the same result so what this get turns into is this line that student one dot full name function is actually turned into this thing over here and what this line does is that it first goes to the students class then it goes to the students class and then it looks at the full name function that is over here and then it passes the object or uh, the instant of student one to this self variable over here and then it finds the first name and the last name and it prints it out while in the case of this line it first goes th goes to this stu1 object and it sees in this line where is this stu1 object created and it sees that the stu1 object is created inside the student class so it goes inside the students class and then it goes to the full name method over here and then it prints out the first name and the last name so now we have a way of adding students inside a class and we have already added two students that is the Arthur student and the Johnny student inside our class. Now what if we want to calculate the total number of students that are inside our class. So what we can do is just like the function that we have created over here we can also create variables inside our class. So what we can do is we can create a new variable over here and just call it uh, number of uh, students and we can just give it the value of zero and then what we can do is just beneath this initialization method we can just write uh, students dot number of students plus equals to one so every time an object is created and the properties are initialized this number of students is going to be increased by one and the way to access these number of students inside the that is the number of students variable inside that is inside this class is to make sure that you add the name of the class that you are referencing it to so if there are multiple classes inside your code then uh, how is python supposed to identify which class and which variable you are talking about that is why it's really important to add the name of the class before the variable so over here we are talking about the students class and we are going to increase the number of students by one whenever we want to uh, increase the number whenever a new student is added or a new instance or an object is added inside a class so now we can just print out the number of students so we have added the first student and the second student inside a class and now if we print out the number of students and how do we print out the number of students we can just write students dot number of students and uh, let's print it out and see what are the number of students so as you can see it shows us two 
Now, what if we paste copy cut this from over here and just add it just beneath this uh, student one instance. So right now only one student that is the Arthur student has been added to the class and the Johnny student has not been added to the class yet. Therefore, the number of students should be just one. So now if we play it over here, as you can see that there is only one student that is in added inside our class. So this number of student, this number of student variable that is declared inside our class is known as a class variable. So a lot of people make it very, very complicated as to what is a class variable and what is an instance variable. The difference is pretty simple. Whenever a variable is declared inside a class, it's known as a class variable. And whenever a variable if referencing is referencing an instance is known as an instance variable. So all these variables over here that are referencing uh, instance, for example, self.fname and last name and self.email, these three are known as instance variables because they affect the instances or the objects that we have created. But this number of students is actually a class level attribute. That is why this number of student is known as a uh, class variable and this function over here is known as a class function. So alright guys, this is pretty much it for this video. In this video, we learned about objected oriented programming, what it is, we learned about classes, we learned about objects, and we learned about the class variables and the instance variables and how do we print out stuff that is inside our class. So this is pretty much it for this video guys. I'll see you in the next video where we talk about inheritance and subclasses and how to create them. So I'll see you over there.